Welcome to Bloodhound and a new series we're calling Anatomy of the Car. Over the coming weeks and months I'm going to take you right from the front of the car to the back in full detail. Think of it as a video FAQ. In this first episode we're going to deal with a question we've had a lot in the last few weeks. As we get going again people have asked why after the successful expo last year when we showed off a pretty much complete car why are we taken Bloodhound apart again? Well Bloodhound is a prototype but it's also our final vehicle and it's a cross between a fast fighter jet, a Formula One car, and a spaceship. And I like to think most closely, it's like a spaceship. If Bloodhound had been a spaceship, how would it have been built? What would the stages have been? Let's talk more in the upper chassis. Let's use a space shuttle as a good example. There wasn't just one orbiter built and up it went into space. It was designed and built in stages with test and evaluation spacecraft that proved that all the bits, those three and a half million bits in the space shuttle went together correctly. For us, we don't have that many parts, but we could still fill a football stadium with all the people that designed and built this car. And at the end of last year, with all these big assemblies ready to check, we wanted to make sure everything fitted together the way we expected. And by checking those primary interfaces, we could be sure that we'd all done our homework right and we had a car that was going to work. So Bloodhound was designed and built in a very modular way, and there's lots of these primary interfaces we needed to check last year. The lower chassis to the rear suspension subassembly, the auxiliary jet tanks, the main jet tank, the APU, the trellis and the rails that go down the side, the main interface from the lower to the lower section of the monocoque, the HTP tank, the upper section of the monocoque to the upper chassis, and the intake. Lots of primary interfaces that we needed to make sure were working the way we expected. I'm gonna go through all of these again in full detail over the course of this series. Here towards the front of the car, the goat's head, the front suspension subassembly, four large machinings that had to fit together and then accurately fit to the front of the monocoque. And here at the front of the monocoque, we have the key interface to the blade, which is the heart of the whole front of the car. Let's go and look at the blade as well. And this is the blade, the heart of the front of the car and the last big interface I'll use as an example the large panels that make up the front structure of the car all attach to this. So this needs to be straight and this attaches to the front of the monocoque here at the end of the blade sections. So we did that dry build to make sure the car was true and straight and all of these big sections fitted together as per these examples but hundreds and hundreds of times over again. Once we knew the car fitted together the way we expected we tear it all down, we check it all and the next time all these parts come together it'll be the final build of Bloodhound and that's already begun. The series will continue when I'm going to start at the front of the car, the nose, in the next episode. Join us for that.